Hey, what's up everybody? In this video, I'm going to be talking about the SSG24, the SSG10A2 and the SSG10A1. I also made a video about this rifle, the SSG10A1 and also sort of about the SSG10A2 because they share the same internals. I made a video in which I talk about how the gun performed on the field after three games. So it's going to be linked down in the description. This video is going to be a comparison of the two SSG 10s against the SSG 24. I'm going to be talking about the feeling, about the differences and all that good stuff. So let's get into it. So I'm going to start with the SSG 24. I've been using this gun for one and a half years now. It's been a very solid choice. Uh, it's been a good performer for me. The accuracy was on point. I had zero issues with, with anything really. I had zero issues. It, it kept working. I didn't touch it at the beginning because I wanted to see if all the rumors are true, that you don't need to exchange anything. I tried that. It was just fine. Usually what I do, I exchange immediately the barrel and the bucking. Haven't done that. Saved me some money, really. First off, I'm going to start with the weight. I'm going to compare the weight. This, I'm used to that. It's just fine. It's I would say on the heavier side a little bit, especially with the scope and the bipod, but I have the same setup on all of the guns. Uh, the stock feels solid. The weight is just fine. When you pick up the SSG 10 A1, ah, it's really, it's super lightweight. I actually played with this gun, not this exact gun, but with this gun without the bipod. And it was really, I would say almost relaxing. The field was very like up and down on the hills and you didn't really, I haven't really felt that. It's super maneuverable, it's lightweight, really enjoy that. It's definitely the lightest gun. The build quality is just fine. There is no flex really. The barrel is not moving. It's just fine, it's just lightweight. It surprised me when I picked it for the first time. It's, it's lightweight, that's what it is. Uh, this gun, on the other hand, much heavier, solid, nothing is moving. I would say it's the same as the SSG, from what I can tell. It's the same. I think it's pretty much exactly the same. Yeah, that's pretty much it. It's heavier. It definitely feels better in terms of like quality feel. It's just a nice stock. You get all the bells and whistles, but let's, let's talk about that later. That would be way. I think these are these two are pretty much on par. This one, if you are into efficiency, speed, running around, this one is just great. Okay, how it feels? Already touched uh, on this topic a little bit. This one feels solid, so no problem there. We all know the SSG24, it's been out for years now. We all know that it feels good. This definitely feels more premium than the SSG24 because you get two different textures. Essentially, you have this reinforced polymer, but here you get like a nice rubbery panels that actually cover the M-lock slots that are here. It's nice. It's nice to the touch. It's, ve it's less slippery than any other surface on the gun. This is just fine. It's, uh, it's textured. It's definitely not like super smooth or slippery. It feels good, but this, I mean, I like the panels. Those are really really nice touch however the stock is a little fatter in terms of this this dimension so if you are not used to that uh, maybe it will take you a few few games to to just get used to that it's just a different feel really so this gun how it feels the surface it's not really smooth it's, it's like a rubbery finish and i believe if you scratch it you can just kind of rub it and the scratch should actually go away. I didn't try that, but it feels like this surface. Maybe you know what I'm talking about, maybe from foam cases or something. It feels good. It's slimmer. It's lightweight, solid, no, no problems there. Like that a lot. So how the feel compares to the SSG? This one feels more premium than I would say the SSG. And this is just lightweight, efficient stock. That's it. Trigger. Let's compare the triggers. Uh, internally, these two rifles, in terms of trigger, they are superior. They are much more simple and they, I believe, will not break. Already said that in the previous video. 
The design, I absolutely love it. Uh, two moving parts. That's, that's all I have to say to that. Here, uh, the trigger is more complex and it's a two-stage trigger. This is one-stage trigger. So if I crank the bolt, I have this travel right here and then I break the shot. It breaks clean, nothing wrong with that. Here, I like the angle of the grip because your finger rests pretty naturally on the trigger. It feels really good and there, there is no creep travel. So when I touch the trigger light, uh, lightly, it doesn't travel at all. It immediately breaks. It just breaks, that's it. I think I actually prefer this system over the two stage because you just touch it and then you know you are already on the wall and you just break the shaft. Like the face of the trigger, it's flat trigger. I think it looks futuristic, so pretty good. Pretty good, nothing wrong with that. Like I said, it's definitely more durable. Okay, moving on <coughs> with this gun. The trigger, it, it is the same, but what I want to talk about is the angle of the, of the grip or the stock here. Uh, it's a little less comfortable than, than this rifle. It's pretty much the same as the SSG, I would say. You get the flat trigger though, breaks clean. It's nice, but I would, I would give the points to the SSG A2 because, simply because of the angle. It's more straight, just like AR-15. I'm a GBBR guy, I run ARs. Uh, I, I definitely prefer that. You can actually like pull it into your shoulder, shoulder and it's, it's, a, it's a nice nice surface to grab on. Here, it's a little less comfortable, I would say. Okay, sound. A lot of people worry about the sound. Okay, let's compare the SSG. I already said that in my previous videos, this gun is actually louder than these two guns. There's like a little bit of ringing at the end. It's, the pitch is higher. Yeah, you can definitely hear the impact pretty well. Here, the frequency is slower. Actually, I prefer that. Yeah. And if we try like this. If you don't have the impact, uh, that's like almost simulating, sort of simulating when the BB is in there. If there is not the impact of the piston, it's pretty damn quiet. So I shot the two guns, uh, this one and this one, with BBs. I don't have BBs here. And if there is BBs, these two rifles are definitely more quiet than the SSG24. The frequency of of the sound really. It's it's deeper, I would say. Here it's like more more pitched sound, if that makes any sense. Okay, bolt cycle. Uh, let's try the SSG24. It's smooth, it's uh, it's just fine, Ch just fine for me. No complaints there. Let's try the SSG10. These two rifles are internally exactly the same. The only difference is the stock. Here you get the fancy one. This is the lightweight one, more efficient one. Smooth, uh, just fine, just fine. I don't really see a difference. I don't even know, like, should that matter to me as a regular buyer? Um, no, I don't care. If it works, it works. That's, that's it for me. Then we have the magazines. Here it gets interesting because the SSG24 uses these magazines right here. Uh, the SSG-10 uses the VSR style magazines, which are a little different in the function. I actually prefer the SSG-24 because you get this spring. I'm gonna show you what I mean by that. If you insert the magazine and you pop it out, it, it like it, the spring pushes it out like that a lot. I think this is just, uh, this is just superior. Uh, with the SSG-10. You put it in, it clicks in place, but then it sort of reluctantly springs out. It's not as secure and if you get some dirt in there, mud, 
uh, you have to actually take it out with your, with your fingers like this. There is not much grabbing surface on the magazine right here. So sometimes it not, it's not that easy to, to pull it out. On the other hand, if you get dirt in this one, it can also happen that it gets stuck completely. I actually put a piece of tape here, which is just sticking out and I can push the button and grab the, grab the tape, pull it out. Easy, uh, easy fix for me. I don't really care. It's, it's there for me to grab on. It's just fine. That would be the magazine. I prefer the SSG in general, the SSG24. Uh, this one, it works. It's, uh, it's just fine. It's just less convenient to take it out, but that's the VSR10 platform. It is, it is what it is. The next difference actually kind of belongs to the magazine release system. The button or the lever here on the magazine. So if you push it in, you just do this and it comes out like that. With the SSG10, actually the system is inside of the stock. You have to push this little button here, clicks in place, you push it and it falls out if you don't catch it. That's the difference between the two rifles. Let's move on. Cheek rest. Cheek rest. For me, kind of important thing because I want to have as much contact with the rifle as possible. Here with the SSG, if I really do it properly, I don't see anything because the scope is actually higher. So I know some people put additional material here to kind of get in the right spot for the scope, in the right height, which is not really there for me. Here with this rifle, it's pretty much the same thing. You don't, you don't get that. You always have to be a little higher, uh, which is not a Good thing and also not a bad thing necessarily because I know a lot of people run face masks, mesh masks. So it allows you to use the mask actually. Not for me though, I like to have proper contact with the rifle. In this case, I would give the points to the SSG 10 A2 because it has adjustable cheek rest. So I can just pull it higher, tighten it with one knob and I'm right there where I should be. Uh, works just fine, works just fine. I like this little addition. Okay, next up we have the recoil pads. SSG24, you get this rotary wheel to adjust the length to pull. It should like rest on your biceps, that, sh that should be in the ballpark uh, of the right, the correct uh, length. So you can adjust it with this. I couldn't care less about this feature. For me, it just adds weight because there is two steel rods running through the, through the stock. There is this huge uh, metal wheel. Uh, this, I don't know if that's steel, well, whatever. It's metal, it's heavy. For me, it just adds weight. I don't really need that, but I mean, I, I, was, I was living with that for one and a half years, just fine. Here, you just get the recoil pad which for me is a, is a superior solution to this because it doesn't add weight. It's just a rubbery uh, recoil pad. The length is just fine for me. It works. I'm happy with this solution. Here, this solution is actually not bad at all as well because you get these spacers. And if you really need to, if you want to, you can put more spacers in there so you can get the right length of the stock. It doesn't add much weight. It's just rubber. It's fine. If you worry about that, if you are a big guy, um, not a bad solution. Not a bad solution. Superior um, to the SSG24 for me. Barrel glue. Okay, barrel glue. <clears throat> okay, barrel grooves. On the SSG24, they are sharper. It's just cut. I think it's a little deeper and the edges are definitely sharper. I like this look a lot. It's more aggressive than the SSG 10. You get these like rounded grooves from a distance. It looks pretty much the same, but when you go closer, uh, this just looks more aggressive. Uh, I think I prefer this one. It's a little more pronounced. Um, 
I actually like it. I, I like how it feels when you when you touch it, when you when you grab it, you want to carry it, whatever. I like this. This um, just fine, just fine. Uh, I don't I don't care much really. But I prefer the SSG twenty four. Okay, internals. Uh, what should I tell you about that? I mean, you can read everything on the web page. You can compare every single one. What it boils down to, uh, this rifle for me worked. I have zero issues. Use this rifle, which is the same as this one in terms of internals. I had zero issues, but I know there are things that are superior uh, in this case, and that is especially the trigger box. It's just super simple and I see no way of breaking this this trigger box it's just it's it's just great and i mean if something breaks in your trigger box you are not playing anymore with the ssg um, i was just fine nothing ever broke um, so it's fine but this is just more simple system like that the rest i mean i'm not gonna talk about the materials and everything uh, it's what you would expect it's stainless steel Actually, my colleague uh, talked about it in his video. It's like in-depth, internals only. If you are interested, gonna link it in the description. But uh, I, I like the internals. They are pretty solid. Okay, accuracy. Interesting topic, very important topic. But uh, I don't see a difference. I don't really see much of a difference. This gun is accurate. This gun is accurate. This gun is accurate. Just fine for me. I've been playing for 12 years. I have zero problems with any of these rifles in terms of accuracy. Uh, nothing wrong with them. They are pretty like out of the box. I, I was never doing any upgrades because I wanted to test the guns for myself. I cannot complain about anything. They are accurate. They, they work. I would say all three guns are the same in terms of accuracy. Related to accuracy, hop up adjustment. Very important thing, especially in the field, you can adjust all these three rifles only with your hand, like this, just like that. There is a little lever, uh, you can push it uh, to the front and pull it to the back, just fine. One big difference though, with the SSG24, you get 10 clicks, that means 10 positions that you can adjust. With the SSG10, uh, you get 20 clicks, you get 20 clicks which means more precise adjustment like that a lot about these rifles you get just more accurate adjustment of the hop up so you can tune it exactly to your crosshairs next topic that i have on my list is also connected to accuracy and that is hop up bucking very very important it's one of the two parts that i always exchange when i get a new gun hop up rubber the second one is the barrel with all of these rifles played with these two one and a half year three games i didn't do that i haven't exchanged anything on my rifles uh, on the ssgs because first of all i wanted to test it if it works um, how it's supposed to work and i found zero issues with the ssg24 the hop up rubber has two o-rings uh, on the on the outside of the rubber that provide the seal uh, like the design, uh, it's fine. Um, the accuracy is there, no, no problem, no problem. However, with these, I'm very happy to, to see the Autobot 60 bucking because like I said in my previous videos, I'm only using the Autobot, Maple Leaf Autobot 60 bucking in all of my GBBRs and it just works for me, it, it's great. Here, I personally get it as well, so I'm Pretty happy about this solution. I like the rubber. It's been my choice for other rifles. It's here, it's, it's great. On the rubber, there is two metal rings which provide a seal and really clamp the rubber properly. Uh, like that a lot. Uh, it's, uh, the seal is there. Right. Just fine. It's, it's perfect, it's perfect. SSG. As we all know, seals, like nothing wrong with the rubber. I prefer this one because it's what I use in other rifles. Okay, one of the last points that I have on my list, overall performance of the guns, uh, they all work. They are all durable. I had zero issues with any of those. I mean, I played with this one three games. I played with this one for one and a half years. Actually, to me, 
no difference. Performance is there. Overall build quality, um, if I would rate them, this is the cheapest option. And the build quality, I mean, it, it's fine, it's solid. Nothing is, nothing is really wobbling. Uh, but the stock, it's lightweight. I don't want to say it feels cheap. It, it doesn't. It doesn't feel cheap, but it's just lightweight, and we all know we all associate heavy stuff with quality. Uh, if I'm talking about quality, this is the premium gun. Then I would say the SSG24 feels really solid. Again, nothing marbling. Uh, the stock is heavier, and then I would give the points to the. Uh, SSG 10 A1, which is lightweight. On the other hand, is that a is that a bad thing? I enjoyed playing with this rifle because I was just not tired. Uh, I could run the whole day. wasn't really feeling my hands. I would actually say it's uh, it's an advantage to have a lightweight gun because if you are all about efficiency, this is the way to go. If you like all the bells and whistles like QD mounts. M lock underneath this cover. M lock here, if you pop out the uh, pieces that are covering it, you have the adjustable cheek rest, you have this uh, QD points, flat trigger, you get that with both, both guns, uh, bolt handle. Actually, the bolt handle, forgot about that. It clicks nicely in place, which cannot be said about the SSG24. First of all, you don't get the 90 degree bolt handle, so it's sticking out which means that if you are reloading like this, how you should be, because you put your finger here in the back and then the, you can pull it at the bolt, you can pull the cylinder straight back. Then actually what happens is that your, ah, actually that hurts, your um, knuckles and your hand actually hits the scope. Don't like that at all. I exchange the bolt handle immediately. Here you get the 90 degree, here you get the 90 degree. Uh, perfect. Uh, Big plus for me because you save some money right there. You don't need to get the bolt handle, 90 degree bolt handle. It's already already installed. Like that a lot. Where was I? Oh, clicking, clicking. That was it. Here it's like, okay, it clicks in place, but it's like, meh. Uh, yeah, don't really like that. I actually drilled. I drilled the bolt handle to make the indents that are inside a little deeper to make it click more. So mine doesn't really do that. You can modify it. It's, it's very easy to make it click in place. But here you get that. It's like, feels good, feels solid. Which, which makes a huge difference when you are using the gun. It's just, it's way better. Like that a lot. Here is the same thing clicks. It actually clicks more than this one. This one is just fine, but this one is really tactile. Prefer this bolt handle, uh, this version, like that. It's perfect. Okay, let's wrap it up. Solid choices, new ones, SSG24. Which one should you get? Uh, depends, depends. Perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. Everything on this table is perfectly fine. These ones obviously are new. There is the simple trigger. They seal, they have the maple leaf. For me, I would pick one of these. And now it really comes to personal preference. Are you the guy who's running a lot and wants to be as lightweight as possible? Get this one, it's cheaper. Do you want all the bells and whistles and tactical look and... Actually, let me show you something. We also have this thing, fully kitted out with the monopod even. You have the uh, bipod here, split bipod that goes into the M-Log. You have the short barrel with straight grooves. You have the suppressor. If you are this type of guy, yeah, get this one, build it up. Everyone will be looking at you at the field because this is just a wall hanger. It looks amazing. I like the look. It's heavy though. It's heavy. Would I play with it? Yeah, I can imagine playing with it without bipod. I'm not using bipods at all on my guns because for me it just adds weight. 
except for having it at home because I want to display my guns. So that's why I own bipods. Every gun has a bipod or a stand or something. Yeah, like I said, if you are this type of guy, the choice is obvious because you can make it look pretty. I'm gonna put it like this for you because it's just amazing. Uh, like that a lot. If you like to be efficient, effective, just pure performance, get this one, play with it. Yeah, that's been it. In the end, it's your preference. You won't make a mistake. You won't make a mistake with these guns because they just work. Out of the box, you don't have to tech on them. I hate, I mean, I don't hate teching. I enjoy teching. But I enjoy like positive teching to improve stuff. I don't really like building stuff from the ground up. I have one high-end gun that I really like take the time to tech on. But when you have multiple guns like me, uh, I don't want to be teching on all of those. So I like the fact that they work. They all work uh, and I don't have to spend time on them to make them shoot good, great even. I just don't have to. It's my choice. The gun doesn't decide for me. No, I only spend time when I want to because I value my time. That's it. Okay, hope you liked the video. I hope it brought you some value, that you learned something new. Maybe you were looking for some information. I hope you got it, that I addressed uh, everything that you wanted to know. Uh, one disclaimer at the end, I'm working at Novridge. Uh, you already know that if you watch my previous video. If you don't believe me, uh, I have one thing, actually two things to tell you. Nobody is paying me to make this video. This is after work. It's actually half past uh, 11 p.m. I'm doing this because I wanted to do it, because I wanted to give you my perspective on the guns, what I like, what I don't like. If you still don't want to trust me, yeah, feel free. It's just fine. Take the information with a grain of salt and make your own research. Make your own research. That's always a good thing. See you in the next one. And if you liked it, hit the thumbs up, subscribe. Always gonna appreciate that. Also, my channel is mostly about GBBRs. So if you are into GBBRs and the recoil and gas and everything, all that good stuff, uh, consider looking up other videos. I have some tutorials that you might be interested in and some gameplays as well. See ya. Shh.